Did you know Bruce Lee worked as a waiter at an American Chinese restaurant before he became a world famous martial arts legacy? And do you know what his favorite dish is at an American Chinese restaurant? We will find out in today's episode with a trip to Seattle. Hi, my name is Christy and this is the American Chinese Food Show. After getting into trouble for fighting, Bruce Lee's parents sent him off to the United States when he was 19. He landed in San Francisco and eventually settled in Seattle in 1959 to finish high school. One of the restaurants he frequented is the oldest Chinese restaurant in Seattle today, Tai Tong. Tai Tong. The name in Chinese means the same and the ideal society in Confucianism. It opened in 1935 and is currently run by the third generation owner. Here's the menu of Tai Tong in the 1960s. It should be the same one that Bruce Lee saw when he was living in Seattle. You see the usual sections like egg fu yong, chop so, chow mein. While it has a small American menu like sandwiches, it also includes a section that is catered to more grassroots Chinese patrons, steamed dishes. Here we have a bunch of standard minced pork dishes like with water chestnuts and salt eggs. Some restaurants would also have a separate section for what I call dish rice, dip tao fan, like this menu at Sun Tai Sam Yun, Sun Tai Sam Yun in San Francisco. Oyster sauce skiplet over rice, pork spare ribs over rice, that spicy sauce with fermented black beans, I can eat a whole bowl of rice with just that sauce. We covered grassroots dishes including dish rice in the previous episode if you're interested to check it out. At Tai Tong, they combine the dish rice with fried rice in one section. And this is where we see Bruce Lee's favorite dish, oyster sauce beef with rice. Something that he probably had when he was still living in Hong Kong as a teenager. A super simple comfort dish, just marinated beef quickly sauteed in high heat, finished off with a cornstarch slurry with oyster sauce and soy sauce. In the specials, I see a few unfamiliar items like lo mei but toka mixed. I was able to ask the sister of the owner at Taito when I was there. She said lo mei is the braised beef dish with shank and tripe, lo mei in Chinese. And but toka is Filipino. That would also explain why pensit, misspelled here, a Tagalog word for noodles, is also on the menu. This is a very well-rounded menu from Tai Tong, I think. It serves American patrons well, and Chinese immigrants who left their homes can also find some comfort in this menu. So how has the menu changed after 60 years? Well, the American menu is gone, so is the steamed dish section. There is an added section for hot pot with dishes like beef brisket and chi chi chicken pot, but it's largely unchanged. It's cool to see so many of the same dishes, mustard, green soup, even the pancit and the lo mei. The owners said they try to differentiate themselves by providing a nostalgic atmosphere and consistency so people feel at home. When you walk inside the restaurant, it indeed brings you back to a few decades ago. The wood panels on the wall, the carpet, the pendant light fixtures, and the stackable Chinese restaurant chairs. How's the food? I don't eat beef, so I couldn't try Bruce's favorite, so I can't tell you much about it. Uh, it was claimed his other favorite is garlic shrimp, even though it's not on the 1960s menu, so I question the accuracy of this account, but I ordered it anyway. For $15.95, there's about 10 pieces of shrimp. Shrimp was fresh, the garlic sauce with fermented black bean was just about right, not over seasoned. I thought I ordered the chopped soy, but turns out I ordered the sorted vegetables. The veggies were great. Crunchy celery and water chestnut with a good smoky flavor from what hay. My daughter was a big fan of the fried rice. She also got a free plate of shrimp chips from our server. We sat in the back room facing the Bruce Lee Memorial booth with a Bruce Lee cutout and a bunch of posters and framed pictures. Apparently, Bruce Lee loved sitting in the back of the restaurant, that way he wouldn't have anyone behind him, you know, so in case someone wanted to attack him. Owner Harry even took our picture for us with Bruce, and that's our visit to Tai Tong in Seattle. There's another restaurant that had an even deeper connection with Bruce Lee in Seattle, and that's Ruby Chow's. 
Ruby Chow and her husband Ping opened Ruby Chow's restaurant in an old mansion in 1948, the first Chinese restaurant in Seattle located outside of Chinatown. When Bruce first arrived in Seattle, he lived in the attic of the restaurant because his father was a family friend with Ruby Chow's husband. It was rumored Bruce and Ruby did not get along. There were even a few made-up scenes in the movie *Dragon: The Bruce Lee Story*, where Bruce fought in the kitchen. Here's an excerpt from the memoir written by Bruce Lee's wife, the man only I knew. Bruce jumped at the chance of a steady job and moved to Seattle. He followed the classic American pattern of studying hard by day and working hard by night to get to college. He enrolled in Edison Technical High School and at night worked in Ruby Chow's, often doubling with a job as a newspaper stuffer on the Seattle Times. Eventually, he set up a pad in the corner of Ruby Chow's kitchen where he practiced his kung fu while waiting for customers. Bruce Lee also started giving classes at a parking garage across the street from the restaurant, and he eventually opened his first martial arts school in Seattle. Unlike Tai Tong, where common folks like Bruce Lee went to eat, Ruby Chow's was an upscale restaurant. This is a quote from the book "You Can't Eat Mount Rainier," published in 1955, describing the restaurant. More on the sophisticated side than many of our Chinese restaurants, Ruby Chow's is located in the turn of the century mansion, redecorated handsomely in red, black, and gold Chinese motifs, and enhanced with special pieces carved for Ruby in Hong Kong. Let's take a look at what Ruby Chow served in the sixties. The dishes were more Americanized for sure. There was a banquet meal with twelve courses: barbecued pork, spare ribs, toasted prawns, bird's nest soup, egg rolls, mandarin duck, sweet and sour pork, shark's fin, walnut chicken, rice, almond cakes, and tea. It's basically the greatest hits of nineteen sixties American Chinese dishes. Thirty years after running the restaurant, Ruby Chow got into politics and served as the first Asian American King County Council member for twelve years. The restaurant Ruby Chow's closed in nineteen seventy eight, and the restaurant building has long been demolished. All we have left today of Ruby Chow's, the restaurant, Ruby Chow, and Bruce Lee are some photos. That's it for today's episode. Don't forget to check out Tai Tong when you're in Seattle. If you like our content, subscribe to our channel. See you soon.